All right, so this first photograph is a uh, photograph of what's called the Bud Billiken Parade in Chicago. And it's the Chicago Daily Defender newspaper would put it on annually. As a matter of fact, last year was the first year that it wasn't um, held because of the pandemic. Um, this is 1967. I'm 16 years old and I'm working for the Chicago Defender newspaper. And I was very lucky because I had a press pass that allowed me to be on the inside of the parade and look back at the audience. This is South Park, which eventually became Martin Luther King Boulevard. And this is 43rd Street. And this community means a lot to me because when I was a little boy, I used to work at a theater called the Regal Theater that was right across the street. And I used to run and get cigarettes for people like Moms Mabley, uh, Jackie Wilson, B.B. King, all them cats. And I would sit in a stool at the base of the steps where the dressing rooms were and wait for somebody to say, hey, boy, come here a minute. And then I'd go get cigarettes for them or hamburgers or something. This is uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And as a matter of fact, that's Fisk University right behind that wall. And once again, that's like a rag man. You know, he's collecting scraps and iron. Oscar Brown Jr. has a wonderful song called Rags and Scrap Iron. This is cool. This is a photograph, 1967, of a nanny. And it's on the north side of Chicago. It's in a white neighborhood. This is 1968. This is a year at the Bud Billick. This is the year after that photograph at the Bud Billiken Parade. And like I told you earlier, you know, it's uh, talking about the Vietnam War. America is the black man's battleground, not Vietnam. And I did a collage recently where my buddy helped me put George Floyd in that picture because not a whole lot has changed. This is a picture. People like to say, oh my God, that looks like the Last Supper. That's C Reverend C.T. Vivian, who's you know, a civil rights activist, Martin Luther King's buddy. Worth reading about if nobody ever heard of him. And these are the Blackstone Rangers, a gang in Chicago that terrorized the neighborhood to no end, you know? It was the leader of it was a cat named Jeff Fort. He's not in that picture. And what they're doing is they're trying to convince people that they're becoming a religious organization called the El Rukins. But that didn't work because shortly after that picture was taken, some of them got busted trying to buy a rocket launcher. This is Angela Davis. And she came to Fisk University. To, and she stayed there a couple of days, actually. And it was, it was cool because um, she gave a lot of speeches. She held classes. And she gave some fiery speeches. But I always like this photograph because it's like she's taking a moment. And I kind of like that, you know? This is called Cops and Girl. There had been a riot in Chicago. And that little girl is trying to come back from somewhere while these cats are going, these cops are going to address the riot. Shirley Chisholm, first black woman to world run for president. When George Wallace was shot down in Alabama, Shirley Chisholm went to visit him in the hospital. People told her not to go. She went to visit him. Shortly after that, he denounced segregation. I don't know if she was the influence on it with the nine millimeter rounds that were inside of them. This is the Nation of Islam, Nashville, Tennessee. I used to work for Muhammad Speaks newspaper in Chicago. And when I went to Nashville, I continued to work with them. And these are the people that were at the mosque. This is 1969, Maycomb, Georgia. A little girl had walked into a grocery store to buy some candy. 
and the owner of the store told her to hurry up and make up her mind. And she told the man, wait a minute. And he came from behind the counter and slapped her. And she ran home and told her mother. And the mother comes back to talk to the man. He slaps her. So the community began to boycott the business district. And on this particular day, they had a march. And Bobby and I drove there from Nashville to cover it for the newspaper, the Defender and the Nation of Islam's newspaper. And on that day, they deputized truck drivers. If you look at this picture, these two cats are policemen. But this guy with the helmet right here is a deputized truck driver. Shortly after I took this picture, one of these guys hit me across my back with a billy club and knocked me down to the ground. I saw stars. Then he leaned over me and he said, nigga, don't let the sun set on you in this town. I didn't, because I had to get back to school. Um, this picture is just, you know, a picture, young man goes one way, old man goes another. That's what I like to call it. This is an interesting photograph because this multiracial couple are dancing. And it wouldn't mean much now, but in 1967, it was kind of a big deal because you see how comfortable the woman is and the man dancing with her is on alert because he doesn't know where some opposition can come from whether it's going to come from somebody black or someone walking into the club, you know. I like this picture. It's called Love on the Bus. You know, we can all interpret it for what it is. This was my neighbor in Nashville. His name is Will. And um, I did a lot of pictures of his family. This picture of these two, two little boys, I like to call this picture Power to the People. And actually, I didn't name it. My friend named it. But it's, you know, during that same uprising that the little girl with the cops, same same kind of day, same picture. This picture right here, called Bus Stop, it pretty much speaks of the segregation of Chicago. No place could have been more segregated than Chicago when I grew up. You'd walk down one street, it'd be all black. There'd be a busy street, and that's when the white folks would start. And the only time that those people weren't were cool with each other was when the winter time would come and people's cars would break down. Everyone was always willing to help the other person. I guess they just wanted to get them out of their neighborhood, but <laughs> it, was, it was worth the help. This one is called Hard Work. He's coming home with his lunch in his bag. I don't know. Uh, this picture is called The Fan. I was at this religious ceremony, and the sun was shining in this woman's face. She was sitting behind me. And she put her fan in front of her face to block the sun. And I just love it, because one hand is out, and the fist is up. You know, these moments are so special, because it feels like I was just supposed to have them, you know? I was just supposed to cross paths with these people. That's why I don't really take pictures every day. I like these events to happen by themselves. This is a, a lady at the store. This is called Man with a Pistol. That's one of my earliest photographs. Yeah, I was like 
just on the edge of being 16. Yeah. I shot that with Bobby's camera. These are my collages. So this is some, this is some work that you haven't shown me? This is the very first time that these pictures have been in a public environment. I think I had some at the Brockman Gallery in the early 80s. Alonzo Davis invited me to have an artist in residence there. And this one is about, you see what it's about. Can't miss it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not a very subtle message. This one, you know, once again, I like to look at these collages like they were a documentary. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they feel like documentaries to me. This one over here is called Anger Danger, Don't Shoot. And it shows these two little boys walking away, black guy, white guy, slave ship, the tragedy of it all. And we see you. This one, this is something really interesting to me. Because when I first did this collage, I was telling a story. The story is obvious. That's Harriet Tubman, Tubman on the left with the white. And she's surrounded by freed slaves. And that's the man being lynched on the right, on the other side. And the cat in the middle walks strong in spite of everything in the picture. But the thing that blew me away was I was looking at the picture one day, and I did the math. My father was born in 1902. Harriet died when he was 17 years old, which puts me one generation away from slavery. One generation from, from slavery, that's almost a current event. So that's the tour, and I'm very happy that it's here. I'm very happy that it's in this community. And I hope this pandemic gives us a break so that people are able to walk in here and see it. Yeah. Well, we're happy too. We're happy here to have it. Well, Jimmy, I have to tell you, I really appreciate this invitation. It's important to me. Well, I, I, a lot of it has to do with how we met and also the conversation we've had and the friendship that's kind of built since then, which I, you know, is very important. I guess it gives you a more intimate, you know, feel for the art and also the understanding too. I'd like to thank you. I'm glad we're here in the community because this is really what it's about, you know? That's what it's about. That's exactly what it's about. So, again, gracias. Thank you so much. Casa, Johnny, his photography, and all the people that make the photography that are speaking through the image. So, Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much.